You are all very welcome to my presentation. This paper is titled Remaining Useful Life Estimation of Rotating Machines Using Octave Spectral Features. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and we'll read this research paper afterwards. So a high level overview of this talk. Firstly, I will talk about condition monitoring, outline the experimental method and discuss the findings and results obtained. In this competitive age, as we move closer towards industry 4.0, it is vitally important that electric machines are operating at optimal conditions. The motive is to reduce unscheduled maintenance, machine downtime, and prevent catastrophic failures from occurring. Abrupt equipment failure in systems such as aircraft, electrified vehicles, and renewable energy systems can have serious health and safety implications. Minimizing failures and being able to predict mechanical fault modes allows for repairs to be completed during controlled and scheduled maintenance windows. This significantly reduces the high costs associated with equipment failure, delays and downtime, as well as the severe mitigation of reliability concerns regarding health and safety. Generally, a condition-based monitoring system will incorporate seven layers, ranging from sensors through to the final presentation of results. These seven stages often include sensors, signal processing, fault detection, health assessment, prognostic, decision support, and finally, a presentation layer. Data acquired from various sensor types can be used to calculate the time left before failure occurs. This time is also known as the remaining useful life of a component. Knowing this time means the health state of a machine can be predicted so that suitable maintenance can be carried out at the optimal time. Bearing failure is responsible for the breakdown of up to 75% of all low voltage motors and generators, as reported by Tavener in 2008. It is one of the most common types of machine fault and is also recorded to be responsible of up to 40% of all machine failure. An effective fault detection system should be capable of predicting failures from occurring well before they reach the stage of severe degradation. Popular methods for monitoring machine failure include bearing vibration, acoustic noise, state of current, thermal imaging, and multiple sense of fusion. Vibration analysis was found to be the most favorable approach due to the non-invasive nature of acquiring the data, the low cost, and the ease of implementation into practice. Signals are recorded using accelerometers mounted to the machines and can be used to gather data without the need to disassemble or power down operating equipment. The challenge with using these signals is that they are non-stationary, extremely small in amplitude and susceptible to high levels of noise from the environment. Because of this, we need to combine signal processing techniques with machine learning methods. This degradation process from unaged to failure typically takes many years to occur under real world conditions. So it's pretty much unfeasible in practice to achieve. To build and test prediction models, we can use data created by carrying out accelerated aging experiments. These experiments are performed under controlled lab conditions and involve increasing the loads and operating speeds or elevating the temperature and humidity. The method and approach in this paper have been tested using the 2012 PHM challenge dataset produced by the Femto Institute in France. For this particular dataset, bearing signals were acquired using two orthogonally placed accelerometers fixed to the horizontal and vertical axis of the bearing external race. Seven bearings were run to failure at operating speeds of 800 RPM and a load of 4,000 newtons was applied. Signals were recorded at every 10 seconds at a sampling frequency of 25.6 kilohertz until failure was detected but the signal's amplitude surpassing the value of 20G. In this paper, three approaches were tested. The horizontal signal, the vertical signal, and a combination of the two using their resultant values. The discrete time domain samples are transferred into the frequency domain by means of short time Fourier transform to obtain the spectral components of the signal. The transformation involves calculating a window DFT of the time samples with each window overlapping the previous by a factor of 75%. The average value of these complex features is calculated for each time sample, which reduces a spectral feature vector consisting of 512 points. These points are spaced by intervals of 25 Hertz and represent the spectral amplitudes over a range 0 
to a Nyquist frequency of 12.8 kilohertz. The next step is to reduce the dimensionality from 512 down to 25 spectral features. The motive being to extract the most useful features to train and pre the prediction models. Reducing the number of features simplifies the complexity of the calculations so that more accurate estimations can be made. This was achieved using a filter band approach of both linear and nonlinear sized bands. The linear bands consist of 25 equidistantly spaced bands applied to 512 spectral features. The nonlinear approach uses a one third octave band filter. This filter places a higher emphasis on the lower end of the frequency spectrum by having more frequent bands on the smaller frequencies. These bands increase in size towards the Nyquist frequency. The signals were divided into five wear states to classify the health stage of the bearing. We investigated two approaches to assign these five classes. The first is a linear approach consisting of equidistant classes, each representing 20% of a bearing's lifetime, as described by the alpha equation to the left of the screen. The second is a nonlinear approach, where class one represents the entire first 50% of the lifetime, class two represents the next 25%, and so on described by the equation for beta to the right of the screen. Analyzing the vibration signals in the time domain showed that the latter stages of the bearing's lifetime should be given much greater emphasis as the signal amplitude seemed to increase at a much faster rate here. The final step is the classification stage, one of the most versatile classification algorithms used for machine learning and pattern recognition is the k-nearest neighbor. Classification of input data is achieved by identifying the most common class among the k-nearest neighbors. These neighbors are all elements of the training data. Two methods of k-nearest neighbor were explored, these being coarse k-n and weighted k-n. The weighted k-n uses Euclidean distance weight with the number of neighbors set to 10, whereas the coarse k-n sets the number of neighbors to 100. The Euclidean distances between each predicting feature from the training set are evaluated to find the nearest neighboring points and then converge on the most popular class among these. All seven bearing test cases were used in a round robin formation where six bearing signals were used to train the machine learning method and the seventh was used for testing. Once remaining useful life estimations had been obtained for each of these out of sample test signals, the bearing was added back into the training pool and the next sequential bearing was transferred to the testing pool. The model was retrained and this was repeated for all seven test cases. This framework was incorporated to minimize overfitting by using only out of sample test cases to perform each classification. The performance of each approach was analyzed by taking the Jacquard index and multiplying by a factor of 100 to get the percentage accuracy value. This Jacquard index value is simply just the number of correctly classified samples divided by the number of total test samples. The highest results for both the linear and nonlinearly spaced classes were achieved by the one third octave band feature set from the horizontally recorded signals using a coarse KNN framework. The highest overall accuracy score of 75.6 is really impressive considering this is a multi class problem with over 14,500 individual time samples to be classified. The results show that the one th third octave band features perform significantly better than both the 512 features and the linear band features. This paper produces a novel feature selection approach, the one third octave band scale, to select features. This puts more of an emphasis on the lower portion of the spectrum, where more meaningful degradation information can be acquired. Nonlinear class boundaries have been found to be superior instead of linearly class spaced classes. The degradation starts with gradual incremental changes, while towards the latter stage, it suddenly reaches a point of rapid change, culminating in an avalanche-like pattern. The signals recorded from a horizontally placed accelerometer in the same plane as the applied load proved to be the optimal location for acquiring data. The high level of results using the K-nearest neighbor approach for classification proves that simple and versatile traditional machine learning methods are sufficient, and that we don't necessarily need complex tuning to achieve high results for this application. The best approach to apply was found to be the coarse KNN instead of the weighted KNN. 
as using the higher values of K achieve highest results. This framework could be updated online with very little processing steps as new instances with known classes became available. The main drawback with the supervised learning method is that we are relying heavily on the quality of training data samples. In this case, we are relying on the ground truth where states being distinguishable and effectively spaced to ensure that the classifier can perform accurately and precisely. This research provides a robust framework for industry developers to implement a sophisticated online prognostic condition monitoring system. These vibration signals can be processed locally on electronics hardware or be ported to the cloud for large scale deployments to estimate the remaining useful life of rotating machines. This is valuable for the automated scheduling of maintenance and replacing parts to prevent costly downtime or in many cases, health and safety incidents from occurring for mission critical applications in the automotive, aircraft and large industrial machine industries. I would like to thank the Institute of, Car of Technology Carlo for funding this research and my supervisors for their support and encouragement. As well, I would really like to thank the IECON committees and organizers for this excellent research dissemination opportunity. I hope that you will all take the time to read our paper in the conference proceedings. Thank you for bearing with me. <laughs>